water red drum fishing tutorial. Uh, so here it is for you guys. Um, Jeff and I have come out What's up? <laughs> to some marsh areas and we are going to break it down for you guys how to get on and how to catch the red fish. So uh, without further ado, hopefully Jeff and I can get out. We've got a couple hours of sunlight left and hopefully one of us can catch a drum. All right, so when you guys come out to come weight fishing and you guys are looking to get on the red drum, uh, the first key thing that Jeff and I always do is observation. So keeping your eyes, your ears, your mind attuned to what is going on in your surroundings. So typically when we're walking out to the weight spot, we're not just like walking out chit chatting. We actually are observing what's going on around us. So for instance, um, if you guys are seeing some birds wheeling and diving into the water, usually that's a good in, like inclination that um, there's going to be bait fish and um, usually whatever the birds are feeding on, the drum are feeding on as well. So as you guys are walking out, really be cognizant of the birds, but also be checking kind of the bottom uh, for crabs. A lot of those little fiddler, sand fiddler crabs uh, that are walking around, even if you see um, blue crabs, not a ton over here, but mostly the little guys, um, those are really what those drum are gonna be feeding on. Be paying attention to the topography, the bottom um, of what you guys are walking on. Um, yes, they like the sandy bottom, but they really like um, some structure on the bottom. Now structure isn't just um, docks, pilings, yet yeah, those are structure, those are really key things to look at, but structure can also be, as you guys can see here right behind me, all of this grass flat, that is structure. All right, you guys, right now there is an awesome uh, incoming high tide right now, so we want to take full advantage, get out here while there's a little bit of sunlight left. Jeff and I have a ton more to share with you guys about red drum fishing, um, but right now we're going to get out, uh, really take advantage of this high tide that's coming in right now with this uh, pretty strong tide moving in, and we are going to hopefully catch a redfish for you guys and then finish uh, this tutorial for you guys later on this evening. That's right, y'all. We're about to get after it right now. Yep. Ready? Yep, I'm ready, babe. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. That was really <laughs> corny. We should do that again. All right, Mr. Water Moccasin, please be nice. All right, y'all, this is like Red Drum Haven right here. Got this nice grass. Got some oyster shells that I can feel below me. And we've got little kind of mouse, kind of like a point right here grass so I don't know if I was a drum this looks like a spot that I would post up at maybe at least cruise through see if there was a meal oh, I'm on I'm on oh yeah oh yeah that's a drum Oh yeah, come on, nice. That's what, oh, that's a nice size drum. That's a huge one. Nice, come on in here. That's huge, oh, oh. I'm stepping all over an oyster bed. Thing is a hoss, like falling over myself. Oh man, this is a blast. Woo. Man, this guy's huge. Oh man, this guy's a stud. Man, this guy's huge. All right, come in here, buddy. Oh man. Waist deep water. It don't get much better than that right there. That is a stud. Whoa, babe. Kirsty, what's your favorite fish to catch in the ocean? Red drum right all here. the way. Here, hold it this up. Is it. it looks big. So, one more time. Here he is. About a 30 inch, probably overslot red fish right here. Caught him on a popping cork, and we're gonna give this guy a solid release. Hopefully, catch more of these guys and just pick them up right here about waist deep water. So she's ready to go, and we're gonna let this drum live another day. Man, that is a beautiful fish! All right. All right, 
encourage you guys. So if you're anything like Christy and I, and you come from maybe like a freshwater background, and you don't have a lot of experience with saltwater, saltwater, the biggest difference between catching largemouth bass and uh, taking that fishing knowledge to redfish and red drum here in the shallow flats is tides. Um, you have an ever-changing uh, kind of environment out here in these flats and in these marsh areas. So it's very important that y'all understand the redfish's behavior uh, with the tide change. What Christy and I like to do is eliminate water. If you can eliminate uh, a, a bunch of water and focus on the areas that are going to hold the redfish, then that's where you're gonna significantly improve your chances of hooking up on that shallow water redfish. So specifically, what we mean is, um, the redfish are gonna typically follow the tides. Um, if it's low tide, then that's where you're gonna, the redfish are typically gonna go back to maybe the, uh, still in, so still here in this shallow water, we have these channels that run Actually, some of the channels run right up against the grass flats and they drop off to about four or five feet. That's actually pretty deep water for some shallow water redfish. So in low tide, those are gonna be the areas that you're gonna work. You're gonna work um, and the low tide actually is in time of day where you wanna use that low tide and, the, and, and how the ground is exposed to your benefit. And you wanna take note of what that ground and what that topography looks like at high tide. So at low tide, you're looking to see, oh, that's we've got an oyster bar right there. So when that tide comes back up, that's where those redfish are gonna adhere to. They're gonna adhere to that oyster bed. They're gonna adhere to the mouths of some of these creeks and some of the estuaries. So that's how these redfish are gonna behave. Just think simply, the redfish follow the tide. At high tide, that's where you're gonna be hunting all up in these, um, where this water, you know, kind of fills up and it's one to two feet of water. And that's where Christy and I are actually gonna fish right now because it's dead high tide. Um, a lot of the favorite tides for redfish fishing is low and incoming because quite frankly, if you have a high tide, you have more water. So that's what we're trying to do is eliminate water so that we can eliminate the word luck from your fishing vocabulary and maximize your fish catching. So again, redfish, they're gonna follow the tides. High tide, you're gonna look for the marsh areas. Christy's gonna explain that here in a second. And then low tide, you're gonna look for some of those deeper sloughs still in the shallow water. During a high tide, that's when those drum are gonna be really pushing up because they're gonna be looking for anything. They are opportunistic feeders. So anything that they can kind of dig in the sand for, that's what they're gonna be feeding on. So primarily you guys are gonna be looking for fiddler crabs, blue crabs, snails. Um, and also one thing with that high tide, it's also gonna be pushing a lot of the menhaden, uh, the bunker, any of those bait fish or all those bait fish are gonna be pushing up kind of more shallow into those grass flat areas with that high tide. So a lot of those red drum are gonna be coming in, in the flats, looking for their forage. So when they kind of dig their noses into the sand, that's when you're gonna to start to see uh, those red tailing drum. And that picture is amazing. Just remember that those redfish are opportunistic feeders. So really be paying attention to all the grass flat areas around you, especially where there's gonna be a lot of forage. So just be paying close attention. Um, you guys can really see a lot of their forage just kind of walking through here, the snails, the crabs, all of the wildlife and uh, kind of the ecosystem here. So wherever the forage and the bait is, that's gonna be where those red drum are kind of pushing up into. Okay, so Christy just did a great job breaking it down for the high tide and the redfish and their forage and how they're behaving up there. Again, opportunistic feeders up there in the high tide and like this grass area, just like what Christy was saying, they're coming up here, they're digging, they're looking for crabs, snails, all that stuff. So with low tide, um, the redfish, they are going to ride that tide back out literally about the same route that they came coming into the high tide. So that's where you're gonna use that again for clues. If you catch that redfish at a, let's say, um, high and outgoing tide, then that fish is gonna follow literally that same, so that fish is gonna be more likely to follow that same pattern on riding that tide back in on the way in. So the tides are like a, almost like a reset button. So at low tide, those redfish, they're gonna pull back to the deeper water, which deep in marsh, shallow, flats, wade fishing terms, that's about four feet. It's not that deep per se, but that is the deeper water. That's where the redfish are gonna pull back to. And they're gonna be at the low tide, they're gonna be looking for those shrimp, crabs, and some of the smaller bait fish, pinfish, and everything. 
they're gonna be hiding and waiting as long as they can because this high tide gives them a lot of area to hide um you know in this grass and just a lot of structure for their forage to hide when that tide starts rolling back out and there's no more water then those redfish they're going to be waiting with hungry stomachs for their forage to dart and literally make mad dash back out into uh that deeper water into that four or five feet of water to try and elude um those redfish so low tide that's again where you're gonna be looking for uh let's say that you've got a creek mouth that those redfish are gonna follow that creek mouth all the way up looking to feed on those crabs and then when that tide rolls back out and let's say there's like a deeper channel on the outside of that creek mouth then maybe that's an area that you're gonna target on that outgoing tide uh, again, low and incoming tide is probably our favorite uh, tide to fish redfish. But again, redfish, they're such opportunistic feeders that do not overthink the tide. Do not overthink all of this. The biggest thing that you can do, keep your confidence, keep casting, and just keep working and keep your eyes and your ears open for clues. Eliminate water. Try and maximize areas of if you were a drum, where would you be? Where would you be looking for your food and your bait? Remember the three big things that fish follow that they are motivated by. All fish, including redfish, are motivated by these three things. Spawning, feeding, and comfort. That's it. If you can remember those, th those three things, you're going to eliminate like 90%, 80% of water and you're gonna maximize your redfish catching. All right, y'all. Jeff just got on a awesome overslot red drum, and we are What's so up? stoked. Um, caught that red drum on that incoming tide, like we were talking about, y'all. See, we know a little bit about what we're talking we about. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just yeah, that's a right. Bit. That's right. Um, hopefully, this is going to be really informative for y'all to get out and hopefully understand more about the patterns of red drum, where they're feeding, what their forage is, and how, how they them. follow the tide, and just how to catch them. Um, so hopefully, if you guys find this tutorial helpful, definitely like it. Don't forget to subscribe for our weekly uh, adventure Fishing videos. Adventures. Fishing adventures. That's I right. Like it. <laughs> oh yeah, and also real quick, so Christy and I, we're gonna do a lot more tutorials on redfish and how to target them. So look for some, you know, of our favorite lures mm -hmm. um, and you know just tactics, you know, further stuff on how y'all can catch redfish. Yep. All right, get up off your butts, go catch some fish. See you guys out on the water. Peace out. <laughs>